And we have uh, more audience also, sir, from the next week. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, AIOS team, the Lalit sir, respected uh, chairpersons. So this was a slight repeat of the talk from yesterday. So I just changed it a little bit uh, to make it a little more interesting. So this was one of the case of the very bad PDR when we the first started to do uh, uh, under the 3D visualization system. So. Basically, I was little skeptical because this was the third day when I first started doing this uh, way back in 2017. So I was little skeptical thinking that it has a learning curve and uh, it has the lag and everything. But fortunately, I couldn't see much of difference. And uh, you can see here, I'm just going ahead with the uh, bimanual uh, surgery. And for the people who say that the peripheral visualization is really compromised in these kind of cases, I did not see any compromisation of the peripheral visualisation. Here you can see it by yourself. There is no compromisation of the peripheral visualisation. The only thing is you need to adjust the, the settings of the microscope moving the joystick so that you get a good visualisation even in the periphery also. In fact, uh, periphery visualisation is much better if we do it in a proper way and uh, kept, uh, uh, do it in a, with the indentation. So I am just trying to show this. This was uh, uh, almost a PL positive in both the eyes. I find, try to remove most of these membranes and finally, I could uh, somehow get a 2080 in this case. And this is the, the newer uh, visualization techniques what we are using is now using the, you can see that it's a very red, uh, bloody red uh, kind of uh, this thing. And so here I'm using the red free filter. So using the red free filter, it definitely helps to uh, fluorescent these membranes. You can see that it looks like a, uh, I cannot say it like a fluorescent membranes, but definitely the visualization definitely improves. The fluorescence definitely improves. So that is the advantage of using the, uh, the red free filters. There are many other filters you can play with the gamma, the saturation, the hue or most of these things. So only advantage is the better we see, better we do so that we have less iatrogenic breaks in these kind of cases. So the, this is the next case. Uh, I thought I would bring it to the interest of the the students or the fellows <coughs> just wanted to show how the multifunctional cutter works here and this whole surgery was completed with the help of the cutter itself so this is the segmentation what we are trying to do uh, thanks to these uh, 25 gauge 27 gauge uh, 10k cutters and the curved end of that so that we have um, uh, it, it acts like a forceps also so here you are uh, see i'm, I'm trying to do a uh, a segmentation and delamination with the help of the cutter itself. I have no, not used a single bit of forceps in this uh, complete surgery. I am not trying to uh, say that it's, um, uh, it's so advantageous. At times we might need the forceps, but definitely with the uh, advent uh, of these uh, new gauge cutters, definitely uh, the usage of the forceps can also come down. So here you can see I am just trying to do a delamination. I cut it into different different segment pieces and then completed the surgery and uh, I just did ILM peel at the end and this was the, the post-op, the patient had uh, pretty good vision in this case. Now this is the another case where, oh I'm sorry for this bad quality of the video. Okay, so these are the few of the bad cases I'll just, uh, this was the case uh, ad admitted in the blind school and when we went for uh, uh, annual checkup, so this was a pretty I think a 14 or 15 year old boy where we try to see if we can do something good for this. So I did a lensectomy in this case and now you can see uh, the retina was seen under the under the lens. So the, uh, here I, what I would suggest is better to do it under the microscope first. Try to peel as much as membranes under the microscope uh, uh, as much as possible. And then uh, try to give some space for the infusion to enter. Uh, here you can see I'm just trying to re uh, remove as much as membranes as possible and then try to turn on the infusion. So turning on the infusion, now you can see inside it's a completely uh, a retina, uh, the retina was thrown into multiple folds. So meticulous peeling of these membranes, definitely uh, patience and perseverance uh, is, is the key in any, any of these case of PVR. So here all the peripheral membranes were also removed and fortunately I didn't have to do any retinectomy in this case and uh, the laser was done and uh, this was the another interesting case i wanted to show it to you all this was the case of uh, subfovial pfo two slides you can see here i removed the pfo 
and uh, the only mistake I did here was to do an ILM peeling in this case. So I thought it had thrown into uh, different folds. So I did the ILM peel, and the next week post-op, the patient developed Mac hole, and uh, and now you can see it was a Mac hole RD as well. So here I I did a ILM. I tried to bring it to the center. And it's, it's almost like an ILM transplant. Under the PFO, I just slided these uh, ILM flaps, tried to bring it to the center. And while doing a fluid air exchange, unfortunately, the flaps came into the, the forceps. I tried to just slide it. It came into the forceps. Once the flap is lost, it's lost. And not just that, I even had a, a choroidal detachment, temporal CDs as well. So here I had to drain the CDs. And um, the heartbeat was high because she was the wife of a lawyer. So the only choice left to me was to do a neurosensory graft. So here I used a, a 42 gauge needle. I tried to, uh, either you can do it bimanually or unimanually, uh, whichever, I'm just trying to show this unimanual technique. Just under the PFO, slide it uh, in the macula. I just confirmed it with the IOCT, look at the orientation of the graft on the Mac hole. And fortunately, the patient uh, had around 2080 vision in this case. So I think I'll, uh, in the interest of the time, I'll just try to uh, complete. Yeah, wonderful videos. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, but ILM flaps are never to be held with the forceps. Forceps. Because they have to be glided under PFC. No, no. I, I did that, sir. But the only thing is, uh, after putting a PFO and fluid direction, it moved. So uh, once it moves, then, uh, then I, I thought I could just uh, slide it. But it, it ju just burnt hands in this case. But fortunately, it turned out well. Yeah, he, he was bilateral uh, bad RD and uh, he was in the blind school. So when we did an annual checkup of the blind school, we thought let's take it as a challenge and see. And fortunately, he has some ambulatory vision and now he is out of the blind school. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks Thank you very much.